Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at the prison cells after n days problem from Wheat Code. In this problem, we're given 8 prison cells in a row. These cells are either occupied or empty. A1 means the cell is occupied and A0 means it's empty. At the end of every day, cells that are vacant or occupied change according to the following rules. If a cell has two neighbors, which are either both vacant or both occupied, then the cell becomes or stays occupied. In all other cases, the cell stays or becomes vacant. Notice that this means for the two corner cells, after the first day, they will become vacant and they'll never flip to occupied after that because they don't have two neighbors. So they'll always fall under the second condition. We're also given a number n, which is the number of days we are going to simulate this experiment on. The initial state in which the cells are given to us don't count as the first day, but rather as day zero. So if n was 1, we'd still simulate these rules on the prison cells once. Let's go through an example just to clear up any confusion. Let's say that we're initially given this as our array, and n is 5. Let's simulate the transition to the first day. For the two positions which I've highlighted green, these stay occupied because for the green 1, both of its neighbors are empty, and for the green 0, both of its neighbors are occupied. The rest of the cells fall under the second rule, so they all become or stay vacant. These are the next five days. Pause for a minute to double check that the rules make sense to you. Since n is five in this example, we'd return the fifth day. If n was 1000, we'd simulate this a thousand times and return the 1000th day. Now that we hopefully have a better understanding of the problem, let's try and produce a brute force solution. The brute force solution just simulates the rules for n iterations. We have the outer for loop, which iterates n times, one for each day. This pre-variable just records the cell to the left of a given position. For now, it starts off as empty because for the first cell, there is no cell to the left. We have the inner J loop, which iterates through each of the cells and updates them. This first if condition is for the first and last cell. If we're either on J equals zero, which is the first cell, or J equals seven, which is the last cell, we're in the second rule. And the second rule means we set the cell to zero. But before we update a cell, we need to set prev to it so we can record its state for use in the next iteration. In the else condition, we inspect the middle six cells. In the neighboring room to the left, which we've stored in prev is a one, and the room to the right is also one, that means that both these cells are occupied. Remember, the reason we need prev for the neighboring left cell is that the J loop goes from left to right. So the neighboring left cell has already been updated, but the neighboring right cell has not, so we can look that up directly. We can also have that the left and right neighbors are both empty. In either of these two cases, we set the cell to one to make it occupied. And of course, before we do that, we need to update prev to be this cell for the next iteration, because on the next iteration of J, this current cell is going to be the left neighbor. If you want to get a bit fancy and shorten this condition, you can simplify it to if the left cell is equal to the right cell, I'm just going to leave it to be the longer version though, so it can be more explicit. In all other cases, we fall under the second rule, so we set the cell to be vacant. Let's look at the time and space complexity of this solution. For time, we have O of n. Although we have the inner J for loop, since the problem states that there will always be eight cells, for every iteration of the I for loop, this J for loop only runs eight times, which is a constant amount. So our time complexity reduces to just the outer I for loop, which is O of n. For space, we're editing the array in place and we're not setting up any extra arrays or data structures, so our space complexity is constant. Now that we have a better understanding of the brute force solution, let's try and improve our solution. To improve upon our solution, we need to look at what the prison cells look like after each day. Let's look at this example over 30 days. When we look closely at these 30 days, we can notice something that will be useful to us. Our output, after a certain amount of iterations, begins to repeat itself. Over the course of 30 days, the parts which I've marked with brackets are the same. This is an opportunity for us to save time because once we identify one of those cycles, we know that this cycle is just going to repeat itself. So we can skip past those cycles to the last few iterations. To use this in an actual algorithm, what we're going to do is store each day's configuration. Once we encounter a configuration we have already seen, we know we have encountered a cycle. So, for example, after the first day, we'd store the first day's configuration to a hash map along with the day it occurred. After the second day, we'd store the second day's configuration as day two. And this would continue until day eight when we notice that day eight's configuration is already in the map. 
Notice that this configuration matches the first day's configuration. So now if we take the current day, which is eight, and the day that this configuration occurred beforehand, which is one, we can calculate that the cycle length is seven. This means that the next seven days are going to repeat the same pattern. So day 15 is going to look like day eight, and day 22 is going to look like day 15 and day eight, and so on and so forth. So rather than simulate this repeating cycle over and over again, we can just extrapolate and use the modulo operator to jump to the last few iterations. Let's look at the code of how we're going to do this. So in our improved solution, we're first going to initialize that map, which keeps track of the configurations. We also need a Boolean, I've called it cycle, to check if we've detected a cycle. Next, we have a while loop, which runs while n is greater than zero. We're going to start at n and decrement it, or count down, instead of counting up, so that way the module computation is a bit easier. If we have not encountered a cycle yet, then we need to save this configuration. We can do this by turning the current configuration of cells into a tuple. We need to make it a tuple because Python allows us to hash a tuple, but not a list. I've saved this tuple into a variable called state key. If our current configuration is already seen in the dictionary, then this means we've encountered a cycle for the first time. So we calculate the cycle length by looking up the value associated with this configuration in the scene hash map. We then mod n by this cycle length. This represents us cutting out those redundant computations because as we discussed earlier, it's just going to repeat the same cycle, so we don't need to repeatedly simulate that. Instead, we use the mod to just get the couple remaining days. Finally, we flip the cycle boolean to true, indicating that we've now encountered a cycle. In the else case, it means we haven't encountered this configuration yet, which means we aren't in a cycle yet. So we save the current state to our scene dictionary and move on to the next step. The final part of the while loop body just decrements n by one and sets the cells to this next day function. The next day function is essentially a simulation of the prison on a single day. I'll show the code for that in a second, but the reason we need n is greater than zero here is that if n is exactly zero after the modulo, we don't want to overshoot by one. Here's the next day function. It's identical to the inner JLoop of the brute force solution, and it just simulates the output of a single day of the prison rules. That's it for the improved solution. Let's now analyze the time and space for this solution. For time, the thing to realize is that there are a finite amount of permutations because the problem states that there are only eight prison cells. We know that each slot can be a zero or a one. So from simple combinatoric rules, since there are eight slots, there are a maximum of two to the eighth possible permutations of prison cells. So the algorithm can only run two to the eighth times before a cycle is encountered and the algorithm is able to skip to the end. Technically, this is a constant number, so we have a constant time complexity. The extra space we're using is from our hash map. Similar to the time, this hash map can only grow if there is a new permutation going into it. Since there are a fixed two to the eighth permutations, then the hash map can only grow up to that size. So therefore, our space complexity is constant. Well, that's it for the improved solution. To recap, we had the initial brute force solution, which was a straightforward simulation. This was O of n time. But then to improve our solution, we realized that there are a finite amount of configurations. And since the rules are always the same, these configurations are going to repeat themselves. Personally, I'm not a fan of this problem. In my opinion, it's a bit gimmicky, but it seems like interviewers are asking it. So if anything, it's a good exercise just to prepare you. Regardless, if you found this video useful, please consider liking and sharing it as well as subscribing to the channel. As always, thank you very much for watching and good luck on all your interviews.